Hey guys, welcome to practice. Um, so this is the third video of 100 following the practices in my book, 100 Mindfulness Meditations. Um, so we're on practice three, which is called Return to Wakefulness. Um, and it's all about how we come out of practice. Um, so you've noticed in the first three practices that we've done, first was all about posture. Um, and we did actually two videos there, how to sit on a chair, how to sit on a cushion. Um, the second was kind of the way into practice and it was all about following the breath. And then the third is the return. So it's how do we come out of practice? Because at the end of the day, sometimes when we start a mindfulness practice, it just feels like we're you know, going to a corner of the room, sitting down, closing our eyes, thinking all our thoughts, getting really frustrated, end up thinking, what was all that what about? What was all that it was about? Um, and, and heading off again into your day. And that can be quite a frustrating experience. So I think it's important to kind of break down these entry points, the entry, the way in, how to follow the breath, where are we placing our attention? Where are we placing our intention? And what is it that we're sort of trying to generate in our awareness? We then go into whatever the focus of practice uh, is for that day. Uh, and as we go through all of the practices, there's loads of different things that we can take as our object of awareness. And then coming out, how do we come out? What are, what are some ways that people use that they like to come out of practice? And it's useful to kind of have this as, as the map. So we won't actually be doing a practice today, but I just want to give six different ways that we can come out of practice and return uh, to wakefulness at the end of our meditation. If you're following along in the book, uh, you can grab it uh, on Amazon, but you'll see they're all um, detailed with lots of different uh, steps there. They're, they're described as variations. Um, so the first variation is simply following the breath back out again. In a lot of practices, we follow the breath into the body uh, and then explore the body sensations, remembering that we're trying to drop our awareness into the body, mindfulness being this embodiment practice. So similarly, the breath is just as good for following out of the practice. Um, so we could take our intentional um, and attention to the four phases of the breath, inhale, pause, exhale, pause, and just become curious of those as we come out. We can literally feel the physical sensations of the exhale, the exhale moves from in the lungs up through the airways and is expelled through the nostrils so we can actually follow that journey out just as we followed it in and that's not a nice way of doing it as well because our awareness is actually gradually uh, just leaving the body and coming back into our external more expanded uh, awareness um, so that's that's the first variation is just following the breath Second variation is a four stage uh, practice in a sense, where we work through four different elements and just check in um, with what's going on with that element and has it changed from the beginning of the practice to the end of the practice. Um, so it roughly follows the four foundations of mindfulness. So we've got self, mind, body, and breath. Uh, so with self, that can often be the most difficult one to kind of zone into what you know what does myself feel like I prefer the question uh, what does it feel like to be me right now so as we're coming out of practice we might think what does it feel like to be me right now and is there any noticeable change from where I was when I went into my practice to what I'm feeling what I'm sensing uh, right now um, so we start with sad, that sense of self then we might turn to mind and think, okay, what's the content of my mind? What's occurring within mind? And again, trying to seat ourselves as an observer to what's going on. So what's going on in my mind? What types of thoughts are coming to me? What's going on? Is there a sense of spaciousness there as well as content and thought or image? Um, so just dropping in and, and feeling, is there a difference? You know, was my mind really busy at the beginning of practice? Is it still busy now? Um, does it feel a bit more spacious? Am I noticing a little more silence now? Uh, the third one is the body itself. So dropping into the physical sensations of the body and how does my body feel right now? Maybe when I went into my practice, um, I was feeling a little tight, uh, a bit constricted in some of my muscles, maybe a few aches and so on. And as I've been through my practice, I've checked in with some of those and I might notice a change as I'm coming out. So again, just kind of what's new, what's changed, what's happening right now. And then the final one is the breath. So 
Um, noticing the breath is a really interesting thing to do because it's it's always something which we can be curious about. Every single breath is unique, like a snowflake. So my breath at the end of the practice might actually feel a lot calmer and deeper, even though the practice may not have been intending to do those things. Often when we go into a more mindful, spacious awareness in our practice, this is something that just occurs. It's one of the great things um, about mindfulness is that it can sometimes activate this kind of parasympathetic nervous system, which just allows the body to, to relax, to open. Um, and so you might notice that in your breathing as well. Uh, so on the way out, we check in with self, mind, body, and breath. Um, and then once again, we end with the breath and we're coming back out into our spacious, open-eyed awareness. The third one uh, I called gathering wisdom in the book um, and is essentially a way of trying to capture some of those subtle things that we might notice in our practice. A lot of things that occur in mindfulness practice are super subtle. Uh, they're really easy to miss. Um, so just noticing what, what have I learned that was new? Is there something that I've felt that was new in my body? A new sensation? Uh, a new image, a curious image that came up. Did I notice a little insight, insightful thought coming? Um, was there some sort of resonance that felt new? Just trying to gather those tiny little new things because then when we jot them down in our mindfulness journal, um, it's a really good way of capturing those subtle things and, and creating some continuity in your practice and thinking, you know, what am I actually getting from this? And that's a really important way of sustaining the practice itself. The fourth one is a cool one. Um, it's about visualizing the room that you're in before you open your eyes. So I call it opening your eyes before you open your eyes. Uh, so you've got your eyes closed and you're coming out of practice, but before you open them, you start to put the room back together. Um, so I imagine you know, there's the sofa and there's the um, sideboard and there's the kitchen in the background and I can imagine myself with the back to the football pitch and the gardens and so on. And you just try and bring that visualization back in so that when you open your eyes, you've kind of already assembled the room in front of you. Uh, so some people like that. If you're not very visual, that can feel a bit clunky, but uh, if you are visual, then that can be a cool way to come out of practice. The fifth one is a, is a simple one. So it's just silence itself. Um, so it's kind of letting go all of the objects of attention apart from just the silence. I would say it's probably a more advanced practice because um, in the beginning stages, there's not a great deal of silence. There's uh, a lot of, of cascading thoughts. Um, so when we've uh, been through our practice a number of times and we've got familiar with the, the gaps in our uh, thought stream, we're starting to sense the spaciousness and silence that can arise within this kind of internal space. Just sitting in that at the end is actually quite a nice place to let all objects go uh, and just sit in the silence. If, if you like to have a kind of activity, the activity there would be listening to the silence. And the last one um, is also quite a fun one. It's just transitioning into sleep. Um, so if you're someone that meditates towards the end of the day, maybe before bedtime, um, it's just uh, simply taking yourself from your meditation sit or if you've been meditating lying down in bed um, and just allowing all the associations to go allowing the mind to become more creative and free will through thoughts and images and so on, and just allowing that to transition into sleep. Uh, so if you're enjoying these, uh, do grab the book. There's so many uh, details which I can't fit into all of the videos. So you'll find it on Amazon, 100 Mindfulness Meditations. Um, there'll be another practice next week. Um, so I look forward to seeing you then. Thanks very much for following.